Greetings, Dan Halligan with Canda Games with a full playthrough of Solo Estate Challenge for uh, the solitaire players out there. I had a static cam set up to try to stop this shaky handheld camera, but the thing wasn't static. It slowly drooped under the weight of the lights and the, and the camera. I'm just an amateur when it comes to filming, so you're back to the handheld. I will really try to keep it from shaking too much. So what is Solo Estate Challenge? Solo Estate Challenge, as you can see from the round track here does not involve courtship and it is a game that goes until we hit two endpoint conditions. The endpoint conditions are we must have max reputation and also in a standard length game with this reputation counter of six showing also have three rows, five columns, 15 tiles, three per category all flipped to their rose side if they do indeed have a rose. We know that, except for the butler's room, none of the service tiles will have a rose, and also none of the estate tiles will have a rose. We'll come back to set up in a second. So if we get to here, and we have max reputation and 15 tiles all properly flipped when, when they can be flipped, game's over. Uh, that's never going to happen in the history of the world. But you'll notice here as we get close, and I'm, I'm going to bring up on the screen a, an actual graphic of the updated board. You'll see below the reputation counter 6 is the number 132. That's what we're competing against. Uh, that's our target number, but that number is going to have some additions and or subtractions based on a couple of things. We'll get to that. But you'll see on either side of the number, plus and minus five per round space. Coming back to the live uh, board, you're going to pick up five victory points if you can get to those two end game conditions early, and you're gonna lose five for every round over the location of the top numerical uh, reputation counter. So if I finish here, I'm going to lose 5, 10, 15, 20 victory points competing against that 132 standard. And that'll become clear what that is. There's three game types. This one is insane. That would be a 5x5 five five grid, so five rows, five columns. That really is a marathon. I put that out there for the hardcore folks. This here is a is probably the sweet spot, although nice short game, probably takes about a half an hour. But the eight here, you'll see that it has a value of 188 when I bring it up on the screen. And this one here is four rows and five columns, all properly flipped, again, with max reputation using the seven, eight counter. You're gonna say, uh, Dan, there's no 9-10 counter. Well, there will be in the upstairs, downstairs box. So you will have a 9-10 counter for Solo Estate Challenge. Setup is pretty much standard setup for a game of Obsession with a couple small variations. Um, you're going to set up your estate organizer with your start tiles standard. You're going to set up for whatever your family is with their proper servants and their family advantage. I've got 300 here. That's standard. Whoop, you're not Cavendish. Get back there. And then set up here, you're going to have your guests normally. You're going to remove from your objective card deck any group objectives because we're not going to take objectives at the beginning of this game. We are going to only acquire objectives in one of two ways, either from a victory point card or from actually purchasing and using the main library. So objective cards are not going to play a big role, but they can play a critical role. So that's uh, that's the objective cards we have. There we have servants. I have my draft ready to go with my seven small servants there. Got the money. Here's the big difference. Um, so in each one of the builder square spaces, we go in the rank of the different tiles from service to sporting, essentials, estate, prestige, and then the monuments. And not only are they ranked this way, but they're ranked from top to bottom. So we have left to right rank and top down rank. These are prototypes and I will have something in the game that will accommodate this. I just wiped out my servants. And this tells me how the AI works and we're gonna get into the AI, but you will have a scavenging AI. 
But the magic of this game and, and where I feel it, it really shines is that you have access to purchase any tile you want. You know the price and its modifier. So you know the cost of every tile that's out here on the board. And you have access to build your own engine, if you will, as far as your estate tiles are concerned. So for example, first turn, I'm always building what kind of service support do I want to make this sprint to 15 tiles all, process, all properly flipped. And that really is the magic because I've always, I've always found that I've enjoyed a game of obsession when I start getting into some of my favorite tiles. And now I can control my favorite tiles. I've got to work out a monetary engine in order to let me shop uh, successfully. I've got only 12 turns to buy those 10 tiles, so I need to I need to be efficient. There's no limit to the number of tiles you can buy, so you can wait a turn or two, bank your money, and you can come in and buy. When you have a builder's holiday, every one of those numbers up top is discounted 100 pounds. That is the nature of the builder's holiday, so instead of buying multiple tiles, you get an across-the-board discount. The grand ball you'll see when we get to it. So I've babbled enough on the setup. I think you've got enough of an idea of what we're doing so that I can uh, explain the rest as we play the game. Turn one. I'm beginning with a big money play. I can't stress how important money is in this game because we know the price of everything. We know which tiles we want. We want to have a high value tableau. We've got to be working over at this end in particular for at least a couple of tiles. And so getting out of the gate early is important. So it's one of the reasons that I chose Ponsonby, get start with the 300 pounds, going to the Bowling Green, 300 pounds, and two guests, which will give me 300 pounds. That's gonna give me a total of 900 pounds. I get an additional six. And so these two go in the discard pile, break him down, flip that tile, and I have 900 pounds. What am I going to do with it? What I'm going to do with the 900 pounds is I'm going to buy three tiles. I'm going to buy, excuse me, buy the servant's quarters, which I think is the, the finest tile that's ever been made, <laughs> and the butler's pantry to get the versatile under butler, put him into expended service. So these two tiles are going to come under here. I've now completed my three tiles that I need for my tableau in service. I could substitute one of those tiles. If I wanted to buy a different tile in the future, I just have to discard one. Very inefficient. You only have 12 turns until we hit the money spot. You don't want to be buying tiles and discard and turning tiles over or even using tiles twice if you can avoid it. I like this engine. I, I don't, I'm not worried about swapping something out because not only do I have that wonderful access to, expend, to the servants' quarters, but I have a combo uh, with the underbutler of both my valid and footman needs being supplemented. Second thing is I'm going to use my useful man here, and I want this particular tile, which is a high-value tile for the price. It was 400 pounds in the sporting column, and here it's discounted 200, so that uh, brings it down to uh, 1,000 pounds. I only had 900, but my useful man discounted that purchase by 100, so he goes into expended service, and I've got a great early buy. Now along comes the AI. I'll bring it up on the screen. You'll see that we have a nine. We go over here, and that's going to take the first tile there, 9, 10, 11 would be the first, second, and third tile. 9 took the top one. We give up the fence paddock, which doesn't phase me at all. Keep doing that, AI. Second turn. I'm going to rotate our service. And i got to get the private study played because there are three potential village fairs in my future, two for certain. I keep knocking people over here. I'm going to have to pull my sleeve back. 
Um, and so I need to play that. I really don't want to give up the 500 pounds I'll get on the next village fair because of the useful man. So absolutely I'm playing that. And I'm going to play the <clears throat> lady of the house in the air. I'm going to take 100 pounds from the air. And look at two, keep one. Let's see what we have. I am glad that she's screening her guests because this one is very good indeed and that one is not. To the discard pile, we're now set up for our village fair. The AI scavenges, we have a two. So they're gonna swoop in here and take the carriage house, the second tile down in the service pile. We now go to turn three. I rotate my service. The useful man is placed at the beginning of the village fair on the private study. He's loaned out to the, to the local town to help with setting up for the village fair. As a result, I realize 500 pounds and two reputation. And I'm going to go to the front parlor with these two ladies. I'm getting an additional 100 pounds from Miss Caroline West, as well as an invite. Let's hope it's a good one. Indeed it is, great one. From the young lady. I get three reputation here. One, two, three. Flip myself over to the second level. Break this down. Flip that tile, starting to accumulate some roses. To the discard pile. And I have 700 to spend. And I took a moment to think there because I want to get after a monument. A monument is absolutely critical because what happens is that it takes away the obligation to flip that tile. Makes me much more efficient, not to mention these are the original monuments, which generate a lot of victory points. Now, I'm going to bring the AI up on the screen, and you'll see I'm playing the expert version, which means that if the AI scavenges a monument, it gets added to that 132 base total for the, the uh, standard game. So if they scavenge two, three, four monuments, it can be quite devastating to my hopes. And they also can acquire victory point cards if they roll a 19 or a 20. So I want to get after that. I'm going to bank that 700 because I have a nice path here with a second level. I'm at second level. I brought in a second level lady. I'm going to be able to go ahead and get additional money and get a monument next turn. Scavenging from the AI. They roll an 8. Come here. You'll see the 8 is the third one. So 6, 7, 8. That's 3 down. Means that they're going to take the north dining room. And that'll go over in their scavenge pile. And we go to turn four. Game moves right along. I'm going to play that croquet lawn, which is its what it's going to be known as in the second edition. Uh, a couple of uh, folks across the pond told me croquet field was not accurate, so we'll be fixing that. And um, I was able to tap some service over here. Uh, in the expended service because of my servants' quarters. So we have a nice combo reputation play as well as a money play. So we'll take our money, gets us up to 900. We're going to take four reputation. 